Hey Psych2Goers, welcome back to a brand new video. Do you always fall back on bad habits because they have worked for you in the past? As the old saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Unfortunately, some of these cultivated habits may be more sinister than you may have first imagined. They may be so problematic to the point that it adds or worsens existing mental health problems if left unevaluated. So to help you become more aware of these habits so you can make the right changes for your life. Here are five supposedly good habits that are actually bad for you. Number one, always being positive. Are you the type who tries to put on a smile even when things get tough? Do you conceal your true emotions and hope that all the bad feelings will go away? A Harvard study shows that suppressing your emotions, whether it's anger, sadness, grief, or frustration can lead to physical stress on your body could even affect your memory, anxiety, and self-esteem. When you're always putting on a positive face for other people, you start to neglect and suppress your own emotions. In the end, it's always healthy to have an outlet to express your problems, whether it's with your friend, significant other, or therapist, or even a journal. Articulating your emotions is a therapeutic activity and is leagues better than bottling it up inside. Number two, working too hard. Did you know that workaholics exhibit similar characteristics to people addicted to drugs and alcohol? According to author Diane Fassel, the only difference between being a work addict and a vice addict is that people are awarded and praised to work excessively. While overworking may be seen as productive and as a means to achieve success quicker, there are always real dangers to working too much. Constantly straining yourself could lead to problems like substance abuse sleep disorders, and anxiety. Instead, if you use the right strategies, you can become just as productive working normal hours as you are when you overwork yourself. For instance, time blocking and priority setting can help recalibrate your work-life balance. Number three, aiming for perfection. Do you stop yourself from chasing after your goals or dreams because you're worried you'll make a mistake? Being a perfectionist is not always a good trait to have. Research professor Brene Brown says perfectionism is not the same thing as striving to be your best. Instead of building you up for success, perfectionism is like a suit of armor that only protects you from the pain of guilt, shame, and judgment. Ultimately, you'll never be able to take the first step towards reaching your goals if you're always stuck in fear that you'll mess up. Number four, avoiding conflict. Have you ever kept your mouth shut even when someone really got on your nerves? How did it feel? Avoiding conflict might seem tempting at a first glance, but by being conflict adverse, you may actually suppress your valid emotions and even manifest them in nonverbal ways later. Research shows that concealing or faking your emotions can lead to loneliness or depression. So while you might be avoiding conflict in fear of disagreeing or upsetting others, fostering honesty and authenticity, even with the possibility of conflict, is more often than not going to lead to a more sincere and fulfilling relationship in the end. Number five, being a yes person. Do you say yes to everything, even when you feel uncomfortable? While it can be good to help out your friends, agreeing to everything in order to get people to like you may not be the best attitude to have. Usually being a people pleaser stems from a lack of assertiveness and a low self-esteem. Not only does this lead to a dysfunctional and unhealthy relationship, but it can also perpetuate bad habits that people may abuse. So instead of saying yes to everything, you can try to reframe your mindset and find peace with the idea that it's impossible to get everybody to like you. By loving and respecting yourself, you can have the energy to set up boundaries and leave toxic relationships behind. Were you surprised about any of the habits we've mentioned? Let us know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with those who might benefit from it. And don't forget to hit the notification bell icon to get notified whenever Psych2Go posts a new video. As always, the references and studies used in this video are added in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.